Hello class, so today is our first day in Illustrator having set up our AutoCAD work. Now I had I had gone over in class some basic Illustrator stuff, so this isn't like a basic tutorial in Illustrator. It's not meant to be. What it is really meant to be is how do I go from continue this process of going from CAD into Illustrator to set up to start rendering. And even in this video, we aren't going to render yet. What I'm really just going to do is take my CAD plans and set up the page. And again, there are a variety of ways of, of doing this. Um, what we're basically going to do in this assignment is open those PDFs we created in the last assignment or the last video and copy and paste them into a new file and organize them the way we want to. There are other ways of doing it. You could render in individual files and place them, which in some cases might be appropriate to do. But at this beginning level, I think this is the best and easiest way to do it. So i got to start a new file. That's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go File, New. And we're going to work on 11 by 17. So once this opens up here, uh, I can ch I'll change the name when I save it here in a second. But I'm going to change the size of my tape paper to tabloid. Tabloid means 11 by 17. And we can see that says that in this way. And we're actually going to do portrait orientation. So I'm going to click the, the you know man standing up and it switch these numbers around. And I'm going to leave my color mode to RGB. I think, in my opinion, at least for architects, for the most part, it doesn't matter much. And this is called digital design class. So if things are really digital, RGB is the best way to view things on monitors, which would be the digital format of your drawing. Um, so we'll keep that there and I'll keep all these settings otherwise the same. And I will say OK. And here we go, up on the screen is our piece of paper. You know this is our paper area, but we can draw outside the paper as well. And using layers throughout this process is going to be very important. So what I'm going to do is, we're we'll, we'll only going to need basically one layer for this video, but I'm going to change, I'm going to double click on that guy right there so it's highlighted. I'm just going to change it to CAD work. What this layer does is I'll put all the drawings that we've just done here on, uh, on this layer here in a minute. And what it can do is, again, in the long run, not necessarily for this class, but in the long run, if I need to go back in AutoCAD and change anything, maybe the client wants to change, maybe I change my design, maybe my line weights weren't quite, quite right. Who knows? Whatever the reason is, by containing it on that layer, I can simply pop out the bad one and place in the new one and just make tweaks from there. So I'm going to call it CAD. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, just one at a time, Actually, the first thing I'm going to do, just to be safe, I'm going to save this drawing as something else. So I'm going to come here, put it in my 330, 300 folder that I made a few minutes ago in my time. For you guys, it might be a few weeks. Uh, I'm just going to call this plan and elevation. That's, I think, what I'm going to be calling it in class. And just hit save. Um, and it's going to bring up this dialog box, uh, box and ask us a few questions, in which case you can just say OK. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a second Illustrator file, which when I do it to open, you'll notice that it, I can see both the Illustrator file as well as these PDFs I made in the last video. And that's because fundamentally PDFs aren't really that much different of a file type than an Illustrator file. Um, so I can open any of these. So I'm going to start with my first floor plan. I'm just going to select it and say open and of course it opens it up. And I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit so we can take a good look at it. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my black arrow as I call it, the select tool. I'm going to just draw a box around everything, select it all. I'm going to go to edit and copy. You could do of course control C if you know that technique. And I'm going to come over to this guy and go edit, paste or control V if you know how to do that. Now we notice AutoCAD likes to sort of rotate everything 90 degrees quite often in a direction that you don't like to do it. So I'm going to go and change that. I like to just go ahead and use my black arrow, come close to the corner, and you get that little swoopy arc arrow, click and start to pull. If I hold shift, it'll snap to various angles, including sort of a perfectly 90 degree rotation. If I click off to the side, I click and set it. Now, I'm going to have to probably center these guys and move them up and down, but I will do that after I get all three in here and a little bit more defined. Actually, it's pretty centered because that's how it pasted it in because I haven't zoomed around. If I don't zoom around, it'll everything will lock to center. But if not, I'm going to show you how to, how to set that here in a minute. In fact, maybe just in case you already ran into the problem, I'll off-center mine. Um, 
because it really doesn't matter. It's not that hard. So anyway, I could cl I could close this. You don't have to. And I'm going to close it and I'm going to open up my second floor plan. And I'm going to select it with my black arrow. Edit, copy, or control C. Con control V to paste. Now, what I want to be careful of, because these two things are on the same layer and they're setting on top of each other, um, they uh, I want, if I keep this selected, I can just move this off to the side or move it down or wherever and I can rotate it. Well, rotate, hold shift, and I can move it into place without having to worry about affecting this drawing here. Um, if you let go, uh, let me undo those steps just in case because you might make a, let's say you, you pasted it in and it's over top and I click over here and I let go. Well now because we put it all in the same layer, it's problematic. You uh, uh, you, you won't really be able to rescue it. You'll just have to undo a couple steps to undo paste. Then just redo paste. Okay. Again, don't deselect anything. Just go over a line. You can see how the black arrow miss, loses the tail. That means I'm going to move something. If I, if I have the tail on the bottom, I'm not going to move. I'm going to deselect. If I have the tail, I can move it away again, and I get the little arc. I can rotate it and move it back into place. Okay. And then I'm going to go over here and open the elevation. I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to select it all. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to paste it in. I'm going to rotate it. And I'm going to look for the tailless arrow and move it to the top. Now what I want to do is, the last few steps is here. I want to make sure everything's sort of aligned appropriately and aligned basically in the center of the drawing. And then everything is sort of nicely spaced on the page. And to a certain extent, this is not a construction document, so we don't have to be 100% accurate, but we want to be, be fairly close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to View. I'm going to turn on my rulers and use guides. First thing I do is go to, go to Rulers under View and go Show Rulers. And boom, I got the rulers. And of course, this is, a, is, a, is 11, so 5.5 is going to be uh, my halfway point. So I can sort of zoom in here and the numbers start popping out. And we can see five and a half is right here. Now to, to get a guide, what I do is I come, if I want to get a vertical guide, which is what I'm going to do for the center point, I'm going to come over to this ruler on this side, click and hold and pull out. And we can see this little vertical line coming. When I let go of my mouse, it drops a blue or cyan line. So now I know that marks the center point. Now the tricky thing with Illustrator is your, your guidelines are actually objects. So in Photoshop, which I know we haven't gotten to in this class yet, you can do the exact same thing, but they're not objects. But we have a little bit of a selection issue. So I want to center my floor plan on this line. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a box around it, but you'll notice I have the guideline and my, my floor plan selected. So I'm going to have to hold Shift and click on the line to turn it back to cyan. What I'm going to do now is I could use my black arrow to move it over. I'm just going to use the my arrows on my keyboard to slide it over. And that little dot that's sort of in the center point right here, that's the center point of my thing. So I can just visually sort of drop it there in that location. And I can click and let go. Now the thing is, since my roof lines may be different between the different plans, the center point of this drawing and in my elevation might not be the identically the same point. So I'm going to pull another guideline and snap it right to the end of my wall because I know that will be a line between the rest of the three drawings. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select around my second floor plan, hold shift and click and click to deselect my guidelines, and then use my arrows. I might even zoom in a little bit. I'm using alt and pushing up on my scroll wheel because um, that, that'll work. And I'm going to click on the wall, on the outside wall, and I'm going to hold shift and move it right over until it snaps on that line. And now I know that these two drawings are aligned horizontally. And I'm going to do the same with my elevation, which has the same wall. I'm going to draw a box around them both. Uh, shift and click the guidelines, zoom in, and click on the wall and just snap it over until it meets that guideline. So that's all I need the guidelines for. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually draw a box just around those two guidelines and press delete and get rid of them. But the last thing we want to do in this video before we get ready to start adding color to it is I want to um, I want to just move these in the correct orientation sort of vertically. So what I'm going to do is I want to give the elevation some space. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to start actually by taking my first floor plan. I'm going to use my arrows just to shift it down. I want to get it I don't want to get it super tight to my second floor plan, but I want to get it tight enough 
uh, that it feels comfortable and I give the rest of my 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 work some space. So I think this feels pretty good. I also think where my second floor plan is probably pretty good set as well, but if, if I didn't think so, I could select both the plans and move them up or down to, to where I thought was good. And the reality is maybe even keeping about the same amount of space here as I do on the sides probably sets that pretty well. And then what I'm going to do is I'll just select my elevation and place that uh, horizontally. Oops. Uh, and I'm just going to move it down a little bit. Maybe give it about the same space between your elevation and your floor plans. Between the two, the space between your two floor plans might be want, want the same space between your floor plan and your elevation, per, perhaps a little bit more, just like that, uh, approximately. And that'll give us some room to do some trees and skies later on. And we have a good setup. They're sort of evenly spaced on the page and they're sort of horizontally aligned right down the center. The last thing I'm going to just do now because because I can is I'm going to zoom in onto this this uh, CAD line and I'm going to grab my baseline here and I'm just going to go to this middle dot right there in the center where I get this sort of arrow pointing to each direction and pull it way out to the side because I want this ground plane to extend entirely through my drawing. So I'm going to click there, click there and let go. Last thing I'm going to do as I always say is layers should generally be locked when you're not using them and in theory if we've done this right so far these first set of videos we never have to work on this CAD layer again so I'm going to lock it by clicking that button right there and hopefully I'll never have to unlock it again but we're at a good point here so I'll save it and I'll end the video and we'll, the next steps will be starting to add some color to this thing